Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Institute. And in the beginning, I want to apologize from you that we have not had any videos for more than a month. I personally have been uh, really super busy with moving and uh, selling my house. So it was a really crazy month. So I hope you uh, forgive me and forgive us here at Integrative Kidney Institute. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the genetic of kidney stones. So let's do this. So when we talk about kidney stones, really, we're starting with a video straight from the get-go, talking about genetics of kidney stones, because uh, we're behind on schedule for uh, our uh, videos talking about genetics of kidney disease. But really, kidney stones are more complex than just genetics. Kidney stones are a complex disorder where genetics, dietary choices, electrolyte imbalances, environmental factors, and even our gut microbiomes play an essential role in the formation of kidney stones. So when we think about the integrative approach to kidney stones, we really think about all these factors and how they interact with each other and how what we can do to prevent further kidney stones in the future. And why kidney stones are important? Kidney stones are important because they are one of the most common causes of kidney disease. And actually, even, you know, people remember kidney stones because they know they can, they can cause severe pain. And a lot of people resemble kidney stone pain with labor pain, actually. But the pain is, is a result of an obstruction in the urine outflow. So an obstruction can cause kidney disease and acute kidney injury, and repeated kidney injuries can cause kidney disease and chronic kidney disease. So when we think about the genetics of kidney stones, we remember that two-thirds of the patients with calcium-containing kidney stones have a relative with kidney stones. And remember when we talked about the JWA studies, the genome-wide association studies, these studies found a link between genetics and kidney stones. There are a lot of genetic uh, variants that have been uh, associated with kidney stones, and these include uh, genetic variants in renal or, or kidney handling of calcium, variants in the vitamin D receptors, and variants in the handling of many other minerals. We'll talk about that in a little bit of details. In the beginning, we really have to talk about the nephron because it plays an essential role in kidney stones formation. The water and electrolyte balance really depends on those two steps that we talked about in the past where the first step, lots of blood get filtered in the glomeruli and then the filtrate that is formed from the glomeruli get to go through tubules where it gets reabsorbed. And I, run, I want you to remember this concept, reabsorption. So a lot of things happen in the tubules where the body is trying to reclaim lost electrolyte, lost calcium, lost sodium, lost potassium, and so on. So without this tubular mechanism, we will not be able to survive and our kidneys will lead, will lead us to dehydration. So it's super important to remember this concept of reabsorption. So reabsorption, again, there's, for example, sodium in the tubules and the body is trying to take it back into the body, into the blood. So think about, for example, a situation where the reabsorption is blocked. So an example to that is diuretics or water pills, where we block the reabsorption of sodium or potassium, and we end up losing sodium and potassium in the urine. And that in some situations is a therapeutic goal that we want to accomplish. So when we think about something that blocking the reabsorption of calcium, for example, that will lead to an increase in calcium excretion in the urine, which put the person at risk for formation of kidney stones. And you can extrapolate that on many electrolytes and many other factors that are associated with kidney stones, such as oxalate, phosphate, and so on. So when we think about genetic variants, 
that are associated with renal calcium handling, there are two major ones that we really should talk about. One is the calcium sensing receptors, which is um, the receptors that is in the kidneys. Actually, calcium sensing receptors are present in many areas in our body, but mainly focusing here on those in the kidneys, in the nephron, in the tubules. So those receptors help us increase or decrease the amount of calcium that is reabsorbed based on the calcium level in the blood. So if the body has a lot of calcium in the blood, those uh, calcium sensing receptors will tell the kidneys that we do not need to reabsorb a lot of calcium and we get rid of calcium in the urine. So activating, of these, uh, activating these receptors increase the amount of calcium lost in the urine. So any variants that lead to an activation in the calcium sensing receptors have been linked to higher calcium in the urine. So any activation of the calcium sensing receptors will lead to increased amount of calcium lost in the urine and increased concentration of calcium in the urine, which will lead to higher risk of stone formation. And the other concept is that a lot of calcium can also be reabsorbed in between the cells. We call that the paracellular pathway. So the cells of the tubules are connected with each other with something called tight junction. So the tight junction is supposed to prevent this, the leak between the cells or the reabsorption that can happen in this paracellular pathway. So they found that there's a protein called claudine 14 that is essential for the formation of, the, of those tight junctions. In genetic variations in claudine 14, make those tight junction tighter. So that prevents calcium from being reabsorbed into the blood and that will increase calcium in the urine, again, increasing the risk for kidney stones. So two things about calcium, calcium sensing receptors and claudine 14 can lead to calcium stones in the urine. All right, now the next concept is vitamin D receptors. So vitamin D, as we know, is essential for calcium balance in the body. It helps us absorb calcium from the gut and put it where it belongs in the bone with interaction with the blood vessels all throughout the body along the way. And genetic variants in this VDR gene, which is actually, which code for the vitamin D receptors that are present in many areas of the body, they've been found to be associated with increased absorption of calcium in the gut and increased excretion of calcium in the urine. Now, there are several studies that looked at vitamin D level in kidney stone patients, and they found that vitamin D level is actually low in kidney stone patients. So how do you explain this association between vitamin D receptors and low vitamin D in the body in association with kidney stones? That is still a controversial and, and something that we don't fully understand. But what might be happening here is that when there is vitamin D deficiency, there's increased bone resorption. So the bone is actually excreting calcium into the blood, and therefore you have more circulating calcium that get excreted in the urine. Knowing this, that will help us to identify patients who are at risk for kidney stone formation from taking vitamin D supplements. So when we do genetic assessment and find out that there is genetic variance in vitamin D receptors, we may not tell the patients to take vitamin D supplementation. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, there are many, many other minerals also associated with kidney stone formation. And, you know, we can talk and talk and talk about these for long hours, but it's very complex. And I will invite you to visit our blog, inkidney.com slash genetics dash off dash kidney dash stones. And you'll see the list of uh, genes that are associated with kidney stones. We summarize them for you. They're a bit available for you. And uh, there are many mutations associated with them and many SNPs that are associated with them. So I hope you like this video. If you liked it, please follow us at Integrative Kidney on Instagram. We are on Facebook at InKidney.
We're on Twitter, at InKidney, and our YouTube channel, Integrative Kidney Solutions, and we're always on www.inkidney.com.